Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12. I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. Folly is a result of foolishness, fools. What will happen? That's what he's saying. For what can the man do that cometh after the king? He's the king. So what's going to happen after me? I'm the king. Surely it's got to be something wonderful. I'm the king. I've sought wisdom, madness, and foolishness. Even that which has been already done. You know, there was David, there was a king. There was uh, Saul, the king. There have been other kings. Then I saw the wisdom excelleth folly. So there's wisdom is grander than folly. Be wise rather than be a fool. You saw that in Proverbs. As far as light exceeded darkness. So compare wisdom compared to, to foolishness, fully and, and, and folly. And foolishness. Wisdom is light. Foolishness is darkness true the wise man's eyes are in his head it's where they belong it's proper you don't expect them anywhere else but the fool that's the folly walk is in darkness and that's john chapter three i got a, i got a great message i teach about cockroaches and men that love darkness they don't want the light light is of god darkness is of evil and he says, it's wise to walk in the light, and it's foolish to walk in darkness. So far, so good. I, I myself perceived also that one event happened to them all, to the foolish, to the madness, and to the wise. And that one event is death. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You can be any age before the age is in. You can be the most brilliant man ever. And then you can be the most foolish man ever. And they're both going to die outside of rapture. But Solomon doesn't know anything about that. We do. So he's saying with great wisdom as a king... And his foolishness and folly and a man that's mad, guess what's going to happen? We're all going to die. No money, no wisdom is going to stop that. But, remember I told you, Solomon is an earthly under the sun. Solomon does not know that the eternal life, when we get new Jerusalem, the new heavens and the earth, he knows not that there's coming a time that we'll never die again. Solomon don't see that. We see it reading the scriptures. The New and the Old Testament together in, the, in Paul's writings and James and Peter's writings and John. Solomon don't see that. <coughs> then said I in my heart. He's talking to himself again. As it happens to the fool, so it happens even to me, the wise. Death. I'm going to die one day. Why was I then more wise? Wisdom does not save you from death. Who is the wisest man ever in all the world? Jesus Christ. And he suffered and died according to the scriptures. So you can have all the medical knowledge. And healing. And people are going to die. You're not going to stop that. Even in the millennium there's death. A little old age. It's only in the eternal life when sin is removed. The wages of sin is de death. Once God gets rid of that sin, then, then there's no more death. There's no death in hell. Because they're paying for their sins presently. 
and will presently always pay for their sins with no relief. So I'm wise. I'm going to die. Then said I in my heart that this also is vanity. The foolish, the madman, and me, Solomon, we're going to die. Wow, you're looking at For there is no remembrance of the wise more than the fool forever. Well, he's kind of half right. Because the fool that denies God said there is no God. The fool that has rejected Jesus Christ. The fool that has not obeyed God. Um, I'm trying to think what he calls that man. He says, I'll build bigger and better. He says, thou fool. Oh, that's what he says, thou fool. The rich man is in hell. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. In hell, there is no more name. You could be a son of a mother. And if, if a son and a mother are in hell, your mother has no name and that child has no name. And they're forgotten. Who's that great man that's in hell with us? I don't know. What's a pope? I don't remember what a pope was. What's a pastor? I don't know what a pastor is. I don't know what homeless was. I don't know what, what Mr. Fields, Mr. Simon, I don't know what Andrew, I don't know what Philip, I don't know Tom. We don't know those names in hell no more. But in heaven, we're given a brand new name. There's Michael, the archangel. There is Elijah and, and Noah. I mean, uh, Moses and Noah. Peter says Elijah and Moses, they have names. Solomon didn't know that. Solomon didn't have an idea that Peter, James, and John saw Moses and Elijah. And Peter said, hey, Moses and Elijah, let's build a tabernacle for them. In the book of Revelation, what is the name of the Son of God? Jesus Christ. He don't lose his name. All right? You take the place where you're living right now. And if it's been around for a while... And some may be able to answer this question, and many will not. You take the place with apartment building or house, whatever you live in, mobile home, whatever you live in. Who was the first person to live in that house and built that house? I don't know. Well, now you, you may know that question. And here's another question you may know. All right, the car you're driving, who was the person that drove off that drove that car off the, the lot for the very first time? Okay, you may know that answer. It may be even you. All right, okay, who was the helmsman of the Mayflower? What were the names of the crews of all three ships of Christopher Columbus? There are names and there are people later on you forget. You don't believe me? Go to an, go to any cemetery, okay? Even ones that you got loved ones. All right, there's your loved one. You remember them. That's good. Take a walk around the whole cemetery and all the names. Who are they? What are they? They. So there, on the earth, there's coming a time that names will be forgotten. But there's no remembrance of wise more than the fool forever on the earth. Seeing that which now is in the days to come, future, shall all be forgotten. 
In the public school system, Solomon, David, Saul are all forgotten. Moses and Elijah. The Pharaoh of Joseph, the Pharaoh of Moses. They're forgotten. And now dieth the wise man as the fool. You know, you're going to die. Whether your die, your death is violent and long suffering, or it's quick and peaceful, you're going to die. Therefore, I hated life because the work that was wrought under the sun, there's that, that expression under everything under the on this earth is grievous unto me for all his vanity and vexation that it's irritation of the spirit. A man spends all his money for an education and he's going to die for the one that dropped out of school and never finished education or someone who's never even been in a classroom, grew up in a country where they didn't have classes. If one thing all men have in common is death and well, sin and death. And Solomon says, I hated that. He looks at, looks at himself in his royalty and his ivory throne covered with gold. And he goes down to his stables where his horses are and the guy that picks up the horse manure. All right, I sit in royalty. That guy's down there manure, but guess what? We're going to die. And you know what? They could take that guy who's, who's shoveling the manure and they could bury him right next to me when I die and I won't even know it. Or I may not even get a burial, which is very important among Jewish people. Yea, I hated all my labor, which I have taken under the sun, life on the earth. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. That's his children. That's an inheritance with Rehoboam. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. I'm going to leave my inheritance. I'm going to write a will. My son gets this, my son gets that, my daughter gets this, my wife gets that, Uncle Charlie gets this and that. I don't know if they're going to be fools or wise. And Rehoboam was a fool. Rehoboam, in his reign, splits the entire nation of Israel and Judah, and they have not ever gotten back right again. Rehoboam doesn't even have enough sense to go, well, he wouldn't have enough sense to go to Solomon's men that, that grew up with Solomon, but he did not take their advice. So Solomon, your inheritance went to a fool, and he split the nation you started. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun, living on the earth. This is also vanity. All right, I worked hard. I did everything I was supposed to do. Let's step outside for Solomon for a moment. Let's say a man has a family. He lives right, he does right, he earns a living, he pays his bills, he's paid for a house, he's paid for the car, he's taking care of his wife, he's taking care of his family. I mean, he just does right. And we're all sinners. And let's just say, tragically, the man and his wife dies and the will gives it to his children. 
and one of his children takes his lot of the inheritance and goes out, gambles everything away, and loses it at the track, loses it, at, you know, the one armed bandit. And I say the other son takes everything that he got inherited. Like I said the other day, I mentioned the dairy farmer. I say the guy's a dairy farmer. And this son takes everything and inherits. You know what? I don't want to be a dairy farmer no more. I don't want the farm stand my day. I want to go live in the city. I don't want that life my father had. And he, he maybe take a daughter, right? He gives inheritance to his daughter. And she goes, marries a bum, a loser. Though those children don't have, the father don't have to answer for those children, but the earthly possessions under the sun, what happened to that, to that guy? What happened to everything? As far as that guy, if he was still, it'd be a waste. The, the farm is gone. The family heritage is gone. Maybe that house was, was grandma and grandpa's house and grandma and grandpa's, and it's gone. You don't know. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair. Of all the labor which I took under the sun. I can work. I can do what I'm supposed to do. What are they going to do after I'm gone? Do you think, like I said, I come from Connecticut. There are two Indian casinos in Connecticut where I, where I grew up. Do you think way back when the Indian tribes and Masquatic and uh, I can't remember the Indians' names now, the Mohegan? You imagine way back when the Mohegans and and the Masquatic. You think ever in their future would be one day are going to be two big hotels and just craziness of gambling and folly and 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 shows and half dressed women? I, I've heard about. The casinos, the half-dressed women. I've I've heard stories at the casino. There are elderly women sitting there at the one-armed bandits, and they go potty right there in the seats because they don't want to get up. I've heard them. You think that's what the Indians wanted? I don't think so. You think Solomon wants today what's sitting in Jerusalem right now? Nothing. The dumb of the rock is sitting there right now. There is no, te Solomon's temple's gone. What do you think he thought about that if he were to come resurrected? He may, he may uh, let's say for a come on, let's, let's say for a moment, here is Jesus and Mount Transfiguration and Peter, James, and John, and let's say for a moment, Moses, Elijah, and Solomon show up. Solomon wasn't there. Well, let's take for a moment, Solomon. And Solomon's like, where's my... Jesus, yes, Solomon, where's the temple I built for you? It's gone. What's that one? What's that temple? Uh, that's the secondary temple. That's built by the Romans. What do you think? What do you think Moses would have thought when, if he were to step and take a walk around Moses, uh, Jerusalem for a while and look at the attitude of the people? I mean, he already said before he died, Israel's going to go into idolatry and lust and all that. This is what Solomon's saying. What on earth, all oh, my hard labor and work. And you know what? It may end up in the hands of a fool. Verse 21, for there is a man whose labor is in wisdom. He's wise to work and in knowledge and equity. He's done everything right yet to a man would be a son that has not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion to a child inheritance this is also this also is a vanity and a great evil you can't take it with you when you die that's what Solomon's saying i gotta give it to my son and i don't even know if my son's worthy enough you know, people say, oh, you know, he with the most toys in the end wins and all that. And I'm going to. You know what the tombs of the pharaohs and the Egyptian archaeology tells us? 
You know what the fact is? that They, they say they have found honey in one of them tombs. And they open up that honey and they stuck their finger in it. And they say, mm, that honey's still good. And they have found seeds in those tombs. And they took those seeds and they planted them. And the plants came up. And they found their kitty cats mummified because they worshiped the cats. You know one thing that Pharaoh and, and all the Egyptians teaches us in, in archaeology? You don't take it with you even though you put it in the grave. If the Pharaohs and the Pharaohs were gods, they were god kings. Why are they allowing their junk to be put all in museums all over the world? And most of the stuff is still sitting in basements. Oh, really good, great God kings they are. They're really enjoying it in the afterlife. No. The psalm is like, I can't take it with me either. And let me bring it up, let me bring it to the words of Stiley Hayward. I don't know what kind of jerk I'm going to leave them to. I have worked so hard, I have done right. I don't know about that kid of mine. Well, who knows? Maybe in America, the lawyers will step in and the lawyers will take the inheritance away from your family where your will has and it has happened. And, and the lawyers and, and the corporation will take away and destroy your will and give it at the will of the government or whoever got the most money. And it don't end up in your children's hands. It ends up in something maybe called imminent domain. You can't take it with you, says Solomon. You can't take it with you, says the Egyptian pharaohs. Verse 22. For what has a man of all his labor and the vexation, the irritation of his heart, wherein he has labored under the sun? All right. Under the sun, Solomon what I see right now living. But let's go one step above a Christian today. Not a, there's no Christians in the Old Testament. They were first called Christians in Antioch, not the Old Testament. I can't believe I've heard that. It irritates me. That uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo were Christians. They, that's foolish. But let's look at the Christian and what we know from the scriptures. Is our labor in vain with Christ? No. We're going to get gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, and rewards, and inheritance. Solomon does not know that. He doesn't even know that there's a new earth coming for the Jews. I believe the new earth goes to the Jews. The, the new heavens go to the Gentiles. And new Jerusalem goes to the Christians. Solomon don't know about that. And for the Christian, when we look at our works for Christ, we're going to get rewards for serving God. Now we serve ourselves. We're going to get wood, hay, or stubble. And it's going to be a loss. So when, if we read the book of Ecclesiastes in a point of view of a Christian, it's not correct. I got at least a minimum of five gospel tracts out today when we went out. Maybe more. And Lord willing, at least hopefully one of them gospel tracts will produce good fruit. And if it does produce good fruit or any of the gospel tracts, there have been people God to use me who got saved. All right, let's take one. I know one man who was named John. He got saved. I take John and everything he does to glory. Solomon's not saying that. Because Psalm is right in the point of view of the earth. Now, all my possessions, if, if the Lord tarries and I die, I don't take any of my possessions with me to, to heaven. True. But I do take one thing with me. I take any souls that got saved through planting and watering God to increase. I get any rewards I reap by teaching Christians to do well. Solomon don't know about that. 
that there is a labor under the sun we take with us as Christians that God will bless. Solomon don't know that. Verse 23. For all his days are sorrows. Very true. And his travail is grief. This life is just a veil of tears, pain, agony, and suffering. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. There are some people who can't sleep at night. There are some people who have so much pain, so much sorrow, so much agony. They don't sleep. One of the biggest problems of people worldwide is insomnia. And for whatever reason, medical uh, anxieties, troubles, problems, pain, this is also vanity. It's emptiness. It's suffering. A man can't sleep. He fights to go to sleep. And he ends up like the fool. He ends up like the madman. He ends up like the man with wisdom. He's going to die. And who is the moron that said life is good? Solomon's not saying that. You know what Solomon says? Get a bumper sticker that says, life is vanity. All is vanity. Only a moron would write, life is good. The only way life is good is if you're living for Jesus Christ and doing right by Jesus Christ. That's the only way life is good. Here's a man in sorrows and travails, suffering. And he can't sleep. That's emptiness. You know, I've looked at some people, and I don't know if you've done it, I don't know if it's a sin, but I've looked at some people in their lives, and I gotta say, you know what? The way you live and what you do, your entire life of what we feed you, what we give you to drink, and, and, and the air, you know what? It's a waste. I got one man in particular. And on his old is in the end of his life, and he died. You know, what a waste. You didn't teach your family like you didn't do right. I don't know if you're saved. Any life that you don't know if the person's saved, that's a waste right there. And you dealt with them. Of course, any life that never trusts in Jesus Christ is a waste. It's vanity. Verse 24, there is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink. Oh, there it is. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. That's out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 24, about a man of God, given wisdom by God, given knowledge by God. He's writing under the sun. If there's anything better to do under the sun, Eat, drink, and be merry. Well, work hard. Why? You're going to die. And the man that doesn't do, a, a, the man that has welfare his entire life, and, and a woman that makes babies so she can get more welfare money, she's going to die too. And if I labor, and I do right, and, 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 and I, I prosper in my life, I don't know what kind of idiot my children are going to be when I leave an inheritance to them. So why don't I just eat, drink, and be merry? And that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. See, he did not say not work. Solomon, writing under the sun, says, be happy. All right, let's bring it to the church age. I'll tell you what joy is, serving God, serving Jesus Christ. I eat, I don't drink, and I'm joyful in the labors of God. There is nothing better for me to go out and do something for the Lord, and this is the rest of the day, I'm just pleased, I'm just happy, and I enjoy, joy, joy down deep in my heart by serving the Lord. Solomon doesn't know that and then plus 
He, I don't know what point Ecclesiastes has written in his life, but we know he marries all these women. That's not, that's mis listen. I'm not against marriage. Okay, I don't joke about marriage. But if you got a thousand wives, well, come on, let's be honest. Your life is uneasy because at least 999 wives are unhappy because you treat that one woman better than you treat them. Come on, let's be honest. I'm not making fun. I am not joking because I don't joke about marriage. And then his wives turn him away from Jehovah and to every other God. Well, he's not going to have joy of the Lord when he's serving other gods and God is angry with him. And there are Christians out there who are married to many wives. You say, well, no, they're not. Yes, they are. They're married to entertainment. They're married to the, to, to the television too. They're married to politics. They're married to sports. They're married to anything but God. And they're not happy because one part of their wallet is not enough for, for, for that pleasure. This also I saw, it was from the hand of God. It is God that, you know what, you can enjoy your life. And we have an open ministry at the farmer's market. And I remind them so often that you're selling fruits and vegetables and you don't even thank God that God is giving you the apples, the pears, the oranges, the green beans, whatever you sell. You don't thank God. And you don't thank God that people are giving you money for your products that God is giving you. In America, we, we are such a great Christian nation in America that we only give God one day of thanksgiving. And right now, for the last few years, I don't know how many years it's been, for the last few years, we give that one day for thanksgiving to God, a proclamation from George Washington. We give it to, let's hurry up, let's finish up, let's get a nap so we can camp out at the box stores so we can get Black Friday deals. And we have such jingle bells, jingle bells, punch you in the face, kick you over, knock you over, because I want that television. There's no joy in that. But when you can, at the end of your day, and you're lying in bed, say, Lord God, I hope I pleased you today. And if there's anything I've done against you, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And well done, Lord God, I just close my eyes and I thank you for this day. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. When you please God, you're going to be pleased. For who can eat? Or who else can hasten? Here. Here unto, mark in my Bible, here unto more than I. I don't know why I got that here remark. But, all right, who can eat, who, who else can hasten here unto more than I? You know what Solomon says? Who has God blessed more than blessing me? I got an ivory throne. And I covered it with gold. I eliminated the algum trees and made them for terraces and made them for musical instruments of my God. I've got stone and silver rocks in Jerusalem. Silverware? Pfft, who cares about silver? I got goldware. God spoke to me twice. God gave me a blank check. Ask anything you want, Solomon. Solomon and David, unlike any other men in the Bible, have eternal security. No man in the Bible, let's say David, did God say about Solomon, I will be his father and he'll be my son. Solomon said, who is much better than me? By God. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight. In his sight, that's God's sight, not the man's sight. God giveth good. 
And do we thank God for the good that he's given them? Wisdom and knowledge and joy. I've got the joy and I've got the wisdom and I've got the knowledge. And as a Christian on this side of the scriptures of the Paul's writing in the New Testament, as Solomon doesn't know, I've got the knowledge on how to witness. I've got the wisdom to know, for a Christian to grow in the Lord, the Lord to use me. And i got joy that I'm telling people how to be saved and they're getting saved. And I have the joy that Christians are growing in the Lord. Solomon don't know that. But I do. And those that study to show thyself or prove unto God knoweth that. We got something that Solomon don't have. We have a complete 66 books of the Bible. Solomon didn't have that. Do you know Jesus Christ on this earth, not in heaven, on this earth, Peter, James, and John did not have the 66 books of the Bible that we have. And do you know what period of time where the Bible is less read, less studied, less believed? The Laodicean church age. The Philadelphia church age where there was an open door, the Bible, the King James Bible, the Geneva Bible went all over the world. And then we came up with, with the modern perversions, the modern Bibles. And we changed the word of God and it, was, it became a closed door. Solomon says the good in the sight of God is given by God. And yet Job tells us, Lamentation tells us, that God also gives us evil. He also gives us the judgment upon our sin, the consequences. But good is from God, and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner. He giveth travail. Solomon says travail and problems and aggravation comes from being a sinner. Travail never came to after Genesis chapter 3. There were no hospitals. No murder, no, med no police, no, no security needed to after Genesis 3. Though your travail, maybe because maybe not because of your sins, but you're going to die because you're a sinner. The, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death. And that Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. I know we use it for evangelistic work, but it's written to Christians. Christian, you're going to die because you're a sinner. How on earth do, do people say, oh, I, now that I'm saved, I never, I never sinned. Are you going to a graveyard? Yeah, you're a sinner. And because of our sins, we have agony and we have trials and we have tribulation and we have sorrow. You say, well, I know somebody who went out and they were innocent, and they were hit by a, a, a driver who was intoxicated, and they didn't sin, but they got all kinds of problems and troubles and tribulations today. That's the consequences. That is the evil because of sin. And the problem with sin is you don't have to do the sin to have the consequences and the evil of sin because there's a thing called secondhand smoke. You may never had smoke a day of your life, but you may get the evil and the consequences of cancer. Sin. S-I-N. Together to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Why? Because the good you get of God under the sun, you're going to die. Now, what doesn't Solomon know? Solomon does not know 
to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Solomon doesn't even know about Abraham's bosom. That's nowhere in, that didn't show up to Jesus' preaches. There are things that Solomon didn't know. There are things under the sun. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes is all about. 